The philosopher Immanuel Kant is an important figure in discussing freedom of expression and how freedom of expression relates to rational debate and the place of rational debate in a healthy and functioning democracy. So Kant's original or original proposition, his underlying proposition, is that people who seek public office or people who want to influence other people, so either politicians, professional communicators, need to spell out their thinking so we can make rational decisions about their argument. And in many ways, the debates that we do in CCB 101 as part of our assessment are giving you the opportunity to put into practice Kant's ideas. So even though we have winners and losers, or we will have winners and losers in our debates, that's really just for fun. The real exercise here is encouraging you to develop your skills in outlining the arguments that you make so that your audiences are able to understand them in a precise way, in a way that reflects what you really mean. So in order to establish credibility, public speakers, public communicators need to present their arguments in a way so that audiences can evaluate the logical processes involved in reaching the conclusion, not just the conclusion itself. So this requires what Kant refers to as a language of rationality that allows us to determine the best outcomes. So in many respects, the kind of rules of the debate that we employ, the, the three people aside, the turn taking, the, pre the presentation of an argument and the rebuttal of arguments, represent a form of that common language so there are some rules that we that we put into play in our debates even though you know to a certain extent they're kind of a bit artificial but they allow us to develop our skills in rational argument and those rules that language of rationality protects us and protects our audiences from acting on emotion or acting in our own interests. So again, Kant is related to um, John Stuart Mill in that freedom of speech for both of those philosophers is about finding a higher truth, finding a higher truth. It's also a way of preventing bad decisions from being made when hollow slogans and appeals to fear make up the substance of public discourse. And unfortunately, that's one of the problems that we find ourselves confronting today. A lot of our political discussions, both from politicians, from journalists, um, the discussion is quite hollow. The discussion is quite hollow and there are a lot of appeals to emotion and appeals to fear that make up public discourse. And we as future media professionals, as future informed citizens, need to reclaim rational debate, informed discussion as a way of stopping the growth of the those shallow ideas and those those quite you know fear-based appeals to emotion now having said all of that kant argues that divergence of opinion is good it's healthy it is it is a healthy thing however for society to progress we need to be able to evaluate those differences of opinions, get rid of the bad ones and or the unhelpful ones, and look at ways of synthesizing and integrating the good ones. That's why, you know, in in real life, 
it's not important to think about who wins or loses an argument but rather how we can take the best ideas from both positions and integrate them so society as a whole benefits so we should avoid using emotion to elevate a belief beyond its own persuasiveness we should try always to be rational and sometimes that's going to be difficult because emotion plays a role in communication but we should not elevate emotion beyond its usefulness and we should only reconsider ideas that we've rejected if we find new evidence so it's no good flogging a dead horse in relation to a particular way of thinking or a way of looking at the world unless there's new evidence to change our thinking or potentially change our thinking so can't John Stuart Mill are all about developing evidence-based arguments and using that evidence and the strength of the evidence as a way of advancing our thinking and advancing democracy, advancing human rights. Now, the problem that we find ourselves in, in the contemporary media environment particularly with the growth of social media is that as gatekeepers the media don't always adhere to those rules of rational debate in fact they actually go out of their way the media at times will go out of its way to subvert them by producing debate or staging debate as spectacle so it's much much more interesting to get a whole bunch of people in a room and watch them yell at each other than it is to watch them try and develop good ideas so there's that privileging of emotional voices over rational voices and as a result we have seen the growth of thinkers such as you know on on the right on the political right such as Anne Coulter um, Jordan Peterson Steve Bannon of course who was involved um, with Donald Trump's election campaign and Alex Jones um, all of whom you know kind of range in 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 opinions from the you know the completely ludicrous and dangerous such as um Alex Jones who believes a lot of mass shootings in America are staged to um, to change gun laws all the way through to much more considered nuanced um, opinions from Jordan Peterson so I think it's important that you know even though we can criticize the media for reducing political debate for reducing social issues and their discussion to spectacle i think it's important to understand that we shouldn't condemn outright these new voices as just sort of being crazy um, some of them are you know some of them are some of them are crazy and dangerous but you know some speakers and i would put you know jordan peterson and ann coulter um, you know in this category even though we might fundamentally disagree with what it is that's driving what they say um, they do present their arguments in in a more sophisticated way and I think we should try on both sides of politics to raise the level the level of debate so that we um, as a society benefit from that so I think it's important not to just kind of write off people that hold extreme opinions or are presented as holding extreme opinions as kind of nut jobs 
um, lunatics as inevitably or inherently dangerous people. Some of them are. Some of them absolutely are. But if we are to meet in the middle and work out a way in which society can grow, we need to take all opinions which are valid, which are expressed in civilised ways, we need to take them seriously. Now, this is the problem. This is the problem that these extreme views and alternative facts, you know, we live in a world of now alternative facts, which is an absolute contradiction in terms and, and a tautology, um, have become legitimised and celebrated as people speaking their mind, you know, as kind of sticking it to the man, telling us what we really, you know, telling, you know, putting into um, words what many of us feel and are too afraid to, to say in public. Um, and that brings us to people such as Milo Yiannopoulos. Um, again, I don't want to completely discredit the, you know, everything that, that Milo Yiannopoulos says. Um, I think a lot of it's problematic, but we need to think about the value of arguments based on, you know, the sense that they make, the use of facts, and whether the, pro whether the argument, whether the discussion that we're having is designed to create problems rather than to solve um, rather than to solve them. You know, we could look at someone like Milo Yiannopoulos as as kind of metaphorically, you know, throwing a hand grenade into the room. Um, and Milo himself will say, you know, I'm just a troll. I'm just being deliberately provocative. I'm just stirring things up. That's you can say that. But that doesn't mean what you say and what you do doesn't have consequences. So we need to really, really interrogate these people and look at the logic of their argument, the facts that they use, and why they're making these arguments in the first place. You know, is it just to stir things up? Is it just to be provocative? You know, run in throw that metaphorical hand grenade and then run out laughing, which does no one any good. Or are we making, or are these people making arguments or um, putting forward positions that are going to enhance people's lives?